Hey there, thanks for tuning in. You ready for another episode of my Bigfoot sighting? All right then, let's do this. Seen a bunch of rundown new horse towns where the church is the backbone, loves in the plow, and the five string melodies grooving. With the farmland rows where the roots run deep, beyond the noise of the busy streets. Where the songs of the South are soothing When I hear the front porch picking down Home rhythm ringing out I don't run from banjo music Yeah If you'd like to be able to listen to the show without ads and have full access to bonus content, that's an option. To find out how, Please go to MyBigfootSightings.com. My Bigfoot sightings happened in South Central Manitoba, Canada. I live in a small community. There are probably about 2,500 people, 2,000 to 2,500 people that live here. I'm in a First Nation community, and... I work as a guard for the RCMP. I also am a full-time director for a daycare here in my community. Where I live, it's dirt roads, gravel roads, I should say. It's surrounded by trees, bush, a lot of farmland. There is a creek, a river that runs through our community, and this creek runs behind where we grew up. We called it Sucker Creek, and I had my first sighting when I was about six years old. My dad passed away when I was five, and... He was a farmer. He also worked for Manitoba Highways. My mom and my sister always used to go off to bingo. Summer days, they would leave to bingo, and they would drive through the field. And they used to take me along. But then this one day, we were racing. We all had bikes. There was four or five of us, my cousins, my niece. Well, they were my cousins, Johnny, Kathy, and nephew, Chris my nephew Peter, but we were all the same age, so we were on the road. The road is probably about 100 yards, I guess, from the house, and we were racing. We were racing from the road to the house, racing who's going to win, and, you know, there was no prize. It was all good fun. It was a hot summer evening, and I had two dogs. One dog, his name was Carlo. The other one was named Crunchy. And they were here, like, standing beside us and hanging around. So two of them go off racing. They come back, and the next two go. So we're all standing at the road. It's um, early evening, sun's out, and it started getting a little cooler, though. And we all stopped, and we looked. It was just like, like a magnet. I guess we all face towards, like, look towards the south because the gravel road, that's where the gravel road was. So on that gravel road, nobody lived on that gravel road. Like, it was, we were very secluded where we lived. Like, there was no houses really around, not for about a mile north of my uncle's house. And um, we all looked towards the south, and we seen this, reddish-brown man, hair, reddish-brown hair, big. I'm talking like even me as a five-, six-year-old kid, I could tell this thing was huge. So I see this thing, we all looking at it, from one side of the bush to the other side of the bush. It must have been about, I'll say 25 feet to 30 feet across from one bush to the next and the road in between. This thing must have took only like four steps to cross the road. 
And I remember it having long arms, massive arms that passed the knees, like, and his arms swinging as he walked. He didn't look at us at all. And we're just staring at this thing because it was only like a brief sighting, but, you know, something I'll never forget. My two dogs that were on the road with us, they just took off crying, running down towards the house, and they ran under the step by the door, by the front door. And they are... I could hear them crying, and we're still standing out the road. We're still, like, wondering, like, because we've seen this thing walk across. And it just, like, my mind went blank. We didn't remember, I guess, I mean, I don't remember, like, I'm 56, so that was 50 years ago. It was like my mind went blank because I don't know if we ever told anybody. I don't know if we... We didn't even talk about it till later on, like in the years later, that about what we saw. But I remember it scared me because it's something I never saw. I never, I didn't know what it was. And I know, like, my cousins, my nephews, like, we're all the same age. We're all like five, six years old. And we never talked about it after, like, during that time. So that was around 1970. 1975. So in 1977, there was a flood here. The fields were flooded. I mean, like it was really flooded here. And my uncle's house that was a mile north, he had farm, like farmland, and so did my dad. But my dad was gone already. He passed. So my brother in law, his name's Leo, he had an old orange Dodge truck. And he wanted to go check out the fields. He said there was fish like right in the field because there's so much water. Like you can just drive there and see the fish right like in the grass. So him and my bro other brother-in-law, Brian, and my nephew, Peter, we hopped in the truck. Me and Peter standing in the back of the truck, Brian and Leo in the cab of the truck. So we went north. So we're driving, and sure enough, you can see the fish. You can see the fish, like, right in the tall grass. Like, the ditches were all covered because there was so much water. So he managed to turn around, and he stopped, and that's how we knew, like, you know, we could see these fish. And we're standing in the back of the truck, and then all of a sudden, my nephew, Peter, because he's the same age as me, he says, hey, look at that. That's that thing we've seen. Remember that thing we seen, he says to me. And I looked towards the east. There's like a tree line because that's where the creek runs through. This thing is walking, is walking same way the first, I guess I should say we didn't know what a Sasquatch was at the time. And he said, that's that same thing we see, and remember? And I said, yeah, so we're watching it. We're watching it walking, like, the tree line. And it's not walking fast. It's just walking, like, casual. But, like, you know, you could see his big arms and long arms. And he's still reddish-brown from... And he was probably about, I'll say, 300 yards away. But... Even from that distance, I could tell, like, he, the first one we seen, he must, I'm going to say he was at least nine feet, nine feet tall. And I'm going to say he must have weighed at least, I wouldn't even know, I'm guessing here, 700 pounds. A very big, hairy man that we first seen the first time. But the second time, it was, seems like it looked like the same one, if that could be I guess reasonable because it, it looked the same it really did like the same color f hair fur I'm not I'm gonna say hair because it wasn't really fur I remember his long arms because that's what striked me because I've never seen anything like that so I said to my brother-in-law I said to him Leo because he's they stepped out of the truck on each side so I said, do you see that? Do you see that thing walking over there? 
And he's looking, and I used to have a really tall uncle. His name was Jim, but he had a nickname. They called him Pressure. <laughs> he says, that's only Pressure. You guys get in the truck. And it was just like laughing a minute ago and looking at the fish. And when we seen that, and he's seen it, look, look, you guys get back in the truck. We got in the truck. We jumped in the back. And he got in the truck. My other brother-in-law got in the truck. And we left. And we went home. And we were just like a mile down, you know, not even a mile, not even a kilometer. I guess they said it was a mile because it was such a, a long road. We got home. And again, I don't remember anything after that. That was my second sighting. That was our second sighting. And the first sighting, I was with my nephew, Peter. Second time, I was with my nephew, Peter, again. Through the years, you know, every time we, because he moved away, and so we meet up, and, you know, I always ask him, do you remember when we see nothing? And he said, yeah, that was that was a Sasquatch. Don't you know that now? And I said, yeah. My dad passed away, as I said, in 1974. My First sighting happened around 1974, 75. The second sighting was just where my uncle and my, where we lived, just kind of in between. My third sighting happened maybe 2012. My nephew committed suicide. I was so angry, I guess, because he did that and I had so much people you know fighting to live and I thought like how come he didn't reach out to anybody anyways that day the mom my third sighting me and my husband at the time we lived near the same river that runs through here this was also in the back of his house the river that runs through this community, ran behind our houses. And it's probably about two miles from my mom's where I first seen, had my first sighting. My third sighting was about two miles where my husband and I lived. So when my nephew passed, they set up a tent to have a wake at my mom's. My sister's like right next door, there was a house. This was in 2012. So when he passed, we were at my house. We, me and my husband were having supper. And uh, we were planned on going to sit around with the family and go have coffee. And the phone rings. And that was my sister-in-law, my husband's sister, Audrey. And she said... um, is my brother home? And I said, yeah, he's here. So I let them talk. And he said, he's talking like, when, where? And he was on the phone for a bit. So he hung up and he said, um, make sure the windows are locked. Make sure, you know, the curtains are shut. And I said, why? Because he was never like to be worried about anything. And he says, um, well, Audrey just phoned and her husband, Howard, has gone to go get their daughter. Their daughter lived about a mile away in a more secluded area. Uh, she had a trailer there, and her name was Sheila. And he said, well, she said that Howard has gone to get Sheila because there was a Sasquatch looking through her window. And I just, like, freaked because, you know, I was so fascinated already by Sasquatch because I've seen it. and. I said, where? And he said, well, at her house. She's getting ready. He's gone to go get her. So I'm all like, you know, kind of excited because I thought like, wow, someone else seen it around here. Anyways, so we're having supper. And I thought, well, you know, I'm going to do these dishes before we leave to go sit with the family. And as I was clearing the dishes, doing them and putting all the leftovers in a little bowl because I had a dog. We called him Puppy. He was outside. And he was a pretty big puppy. He must have been about a year old. And so I gathered all the food. And my husband, he's uh, disabled. He uses a wheelchair. He used 
crutches to walk. He lost his legs when he worked for CN Rail. Anyway, so I gathered all the food, the scraps, and opened the door. And we had a ramp that led from our deck down the ramp. And maybe 10 feet from the ramp, we had a shed. So I went out with the bull and my dog, puppy, never, you know, he was uh, not a starving dog. And so when I was walking out, he's just jumping on me, jumping on me. And I'm wondering, why are you jumping on me? And I said, stop, get down, get down. And I'm holding that bowl of food and, you know, he's jumping on me. He never, ever did that. So as I'm walking down the ramp, I see, not in, like, directly, but, like, by, how can I say, like, where I don't look direct, but by the shed, I see this thing standing there I see hands I see hair I see reddish brown hair and I'm thinking not again not a third time and I just stopped in my tracks because I looked up to I'm gonna say the waist up above like the chest because this thing was so massive and I thought okay if I look at his face if I look at his eyes He's going to know me. That's how I thought, right? I'm thinking like that in my head. I just dropped that bowl down. And I went inside. And I shut the screen door. And my husband is sitting there in his wheelchair. And I said, I just seen a Sasquatch outside. He says, what? I said, I just seen a Sasquatch by the shed. So he goes out opens the door, he goes down the ramp, and I'm right behind him, and he said, where? And I said, I was standing right by the shed. I said, but I didn't look at his face. I seen his, his legs, his arms, his, I said, he's reddish brown, he's big, he's really big. I said, I said, do you remember when I told you when I seen that before? I said, that, like the same color. I said, same, same one. That's, he says, how can it be the same one? I said, because I know it's the same one. But I wasn't going to look at his face. I wasn't going to look at his his eyes because he would have known me. You know, I don't know why I had that thought in my head. So we stood there five, ten minutes, and he's just looking at the shed, like that shed area, because there was a tree there. And he says, well, let's just go. He said, well, bring the dog in. So first time he ever let my dog come in the house because my dog was a watchdog and my dog was so willing to come inside so we shut the curtain uh, blinds and left my dog inside and we left uh, we had a truck he got in the truck I helped him and we drove to my sister's which is about a mile two miles away because it was right by beside my mom's house now uh, my mom's where I see my first sighting. So we get to the tent and I went and grabbed some coffee. And when we were pulling up there, though, my sister and her grandkids were leaving in her van. But she lived about um, a half a kilometer from me and my husband's house. So when she drove away, all she said was, hi, she's going home. It's already early evening, staying like my nephew passed in June. So this was early June. So we sat down and I made my husband coffee and I sat down. We're sitting around. We were sitting there about 15, 20 minutes. All of a sudden, my sister comes back with her van just like racing down the road because it's all gravel road. She pulls up. And they all get out of the van again. I'm thinking, I wonder why they're back if they're going home to sleep because it was already like getting like eight, nine in the evening. And she says, um, we just seen something. When I said, where? She said, probably about three, four houses from, because where my husband and I lived, there were houses like along the road, like at least every 200, 100, 200 yards apart. So about the third house from me and my husband's house, she said, 
there's something big standing by a shed there. I said, really? She says, yeah. I said, I seen something. I said, I seen something by our shed. I said, before we came here, I said, and um, Howard, uh, Audrey, his daughter seen someone looking into her window, and she said that was a Sasquatch. She said, well, I need to go home. She said, I said, okay. I said, we're going to follow you. So we all get in our vehicles, my sister, her van, and me and my husband in our truck. And we drove, like, past our house to the house where she seen that thing standing because she was with four of her grandkids. And her grandson says, that's where that thing was standing. That thing was, like, nine feet tall. And it was standing against a the shed there. Well, we sat at the road for about 10 minutes, so we can't see anything anywhere. So she went home, me and my husband got back into the truck, and we drove home, like just three houses down. And we let the dog out, and he was quiet almost all night, I guess. Uh, we went to bed. The next morning, the grass was a little damp, so I thought, I'm going to go out and I was getting ready I'd make coffee and dressed up and my two nieces pulled up before I could go outside so they drove up and so I went outside to meet them and talk to them and I said you know what I said, I'm going to check something because I was scared I was still scared well not scared but I guess kind of scared because I don't know what I saw the night before the day before so the shed is like five ten feet away in that tree that i see that thing standing i went there and the grass is a little tall because that's behind the shed this grass where i seen this thing standing it's all flattened out so i know that it wasn't my imagination that there was something standing there. I felt chills because I know in my heart that the third encounter, third sighting that I've seen, that it was always the same Bigfoot that I've seen throughout my life. I don't want to say that there's a family of Bigfoots, big feet here in my small community, but to me, it's the same one. I don't know why I have that that idea in my head. So when I told my friend about my sightings, my friend Sonny, he spoke about his encounter just in Saskatchewan on the other, like right at the border. There's a little... Um, I'm going to say a little park, a little resort that he had his sighting. So we kind of shared, you know, similarities and differences in our sightings. And um, he started a Facebook page, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Bigfoot something. He made me an admin and he's an admin. I shared my story on there. And I said, if anybody wants to share their stories, you can inbox me or you can post on here. So this lady that lives probably about a mile, probably halfway between my husband's and, and my mom's house, she inboxed me and she said that she had an encounter, a sighting of a Bigfoot in 1977, 76, 77. Same area where I had my first sighting. And she said that it walked across the road. And she said it was reddish brown. It was about nine feet tall. It weighed about 800 pounds. A very big, massive, hairy man. When she told me that, I thought, wow, you know, I know that what I saw was probably the same one that she saw because the year 1976, 77, and she had the same sighting in the same area that I did. 
I have told my stories, sightings to various people around here. Some believe, a lot believe. Some, you know, look at me and I guess just want me to finish my story and not want to comment anything. Maybe they don't believe it. Well, that's their choice. I respect that. My son, right now, I live alone. I live halfway between my ex-husband. We're still legally married. We're friends. Uh, we didn't work out, but, you know, I help him because he's he's disabled. So he lives about a mile from me. My mom's homestead. My mom is gone already. She passed away um, in 2013. So I'm halfway between them. So we're all on gravel road. My son... He's 32. He moved from the city. He got hurt. So he stays with me. He bikes a lot. And he walks a lot. Like, um, the houses are not close together here. But, you know, I can see my sisters across the road. My neighbors beside me. It's not heavily populated. But, you know, you have neighbors. And, you're, you know, you can actually yell across the road and someone hears you. He likes to walk around, and he likes to walk around in the evenings. This one evening um, last summer, he came home, and, uh, and just the way he looked, and I said, are you okay? And he said, no, Mom, I'm not okay. And I said, well, what's wrong? He said, I was just walking by uh, just, I'll say, a few hundred yards from here. There's a trail, and he said, there's something standing there. And it has orange eyes. And I said, well, what, what did you do? He says, I just biked really fast, he said. He said, I know what I saw, Mom. That thing had orange eyes, and it was big because the mercury light was on it. And I said, well, did it do anything? And he said, no, it was just standing there. I said, well, you know what? Stay home. Stay home. Don't go anywhere. I said, there's so much things out there that you don't even know. Like, you know, there's even cougars and mountain lions. Like, I was just trying to scare him up because I didn't want him to see anything that I did. So later that evening, I was sitting here and he, he was in the bedroom and he comes out and he came and sat with me and he says, Mom, can I ask you something? And I said, yeah, what? He said, I, I, I was just talking to, like, his other cousin. Because I had a house before this house. I moved in here four years ago, a brand new house. Right behind my house, there's a big, like, a gravel pit where they make gravel. Well, they used to make gravel. My friend was visiting when we were moving in, and... They were loading, unloading like my furniture and he took out his spotlight and he was in the backyard. He was spotlighting the gravel pits like to see if there was deer or something. This was in November I moved in here. And he hooked up his um his spotlight. And then we went there, we I went there and my daughter. So we're standing there and then he's look at that. And we could see a orange eyes uh, at least 200 yards away and he says that's not a jumper that's not a bear and my friend was a hunter he says I have no idea what that is and he kept shining that light towards that those eyes and you could see the eyes close you could virtually see the eyes close because as if they were they were like glowing even with the spotlight on them and I said, shut that light. I said, you know what? I said, I want to stand here no more. I said, I came inside. He came inside. He shut the door and locked it. And he says, I don't know what that is. He says, I never seen it. And that thing, those eyes are too high up the ground, he said. When my son told me, like, we moved in here four years ago, and that's when my friend seen those eyes way in the back. And my son told me this last summer, same thing, orange eyes. and. He told me that, you know, he said, I was just talking to his other cousin because I had a house across the road, but it burnt. He said when, um, I guess they were visiting there, um, our old house across the road from here. And he said, um, there was a Sasquatch standing by the window. 
where I lived before. I lived there in 2012. And he told my brother, and my brother said, well, there's Sasquatches around here. That's what my brother said. I never knew this till last summer, that they did see something across the road. Late summer, last year, 2023, it was raining. It was a rainy night, and I like driving at night. That's when I relax, I drive. I went on a little a short trip, and my son was home, and I pulled up in my truck. And when you drive into my yard, a very short driveway, and you can't even drive like towards the back because there's a like a water tank holding tank sitting there. So I pulled up and I pulled towards not in front of the house, but towards the holding tank. And I'm I'm thinking, what is that? I see something like the size of like a barrel, a barrel and a half. My lights are shining on it. It's raining. And this thing is like crawling through the grass. And because my, behind my house there's a gravel pit, I see this thing crawling like, I'm going to say like a spider would crawl. And it went into the tall grass because there's like a little hill behind my house and there's tall grass there and it's not very, like my house, the bushes are right there, like, 10 feet away. Then you have the open field of the gravel pit. And I backed up and I kind of drove onto like the grass to see if I could still see it. And that's when I got scared. I backed up. I parked my truck. I jumped out of my truck and I came running to the door and I unlocked the door and I slammed it and my son goes, Mom, what's wrong? And I said, nothing, nothing, I said. And I checked my cameras. I have security cameras all around my house. I have security cameras inside my house. And I checked my security cameras. He goes, what are you looking for? And I said, nothing. I saw something. I said, and I don't know how to explain it. And he goes, well, what did you see? What did you see? And I said, I seen something the size of almost two barrels crawling through the grass beside the house leading and going into the bush right there. So I checked my cameras for, I checked all the timelines on the back cameras, the back doors, nothing, nothing showed up on there. I couldn't sleep. My son didn't sleep either. He was in and out of his bedroom, and I, I sleep on my couch. I kept looking at the cameras, and I didn't know what to think. The next morning, early in the morning, my son, like, it's not sunny, but it, the sun is out a little bit, still a bit cloudy. And um, my son came out of the bedroom and goes, did you even sleep? And I said, no. He says, let's go outside. Let's go check See if we can see anything. So we put on our jackets and shoes and we walked out and to the side of the house where I see nothing. You could see where my tire marks like on the grass because I didn't go very far into the grass. And then where I see nothing crawling, you could see the flat grass all the way to the bush. And I knew that whatever it was, was real. A bear would never crawl like what I saw it crawl. I got kind of scared because I thought, is this thing following me? Does this thing know where I live? Is it going to hurt me? Is it going to only show up when someone passes away? I thought of that. Because not long after, my nephew passed away, and he was always here. He was my handyman. And I thought, does he only show himself when there's going to be a death? Does it relate to death in my family? I don't know. 
I'm not afraid of a Sasquatch as a Sasquatch. I think I'm more afraid of the sign or what I think is a sign that he's around and death happens. Is it a sort of a messenger? In all my sightings, I've never felt afraid, but I guess I was afraid of the unknown because I was so young when I first had a sighting. If I were to step out, because where I live, I'm still surrounded by, you know, woods and a bunch of trees and like, right, you go from look out in my back door, there's nothing for miles. There's houses next door and beside me, but there's nothing like towards the west of my house. And, you know, it's still secluded. Maybe in November, I have a neighbor. She's like 100 yards from me. She's to the north of me. There's no lights between our houses. We do have mercury lights at the road, but she messaged me on Facebook and she said, can you keep your phone on? And I said, why? What's wrong? Something just hit my house, she said. I said, when? She said, like a minute ago. Right after she said that, something hit my house. I said, Something just hit my house. I have uh, my nephew. He's uh, a security. Two of them are securities here in, in my home community. I phoned him right away. He was here like within five minutes because he just lives like across diagonally from me. He circled my house on his quad. Never saw nothing. And he circled my neighbor's yard. Didn't see nothing, but he's using a quad, so I'm sure if a Sasquatch was standing there, he would have took off with the sound of the quad. I told my neighbor, you know, I've seen things, and she said, well, so have I. So when that thing hit my house and her house, it it, it worries me. I guess that's what I, that's the proper word instead of scaring me. It worries me because it seems like it's going to be a sign of someone passing away in my family. Maybe I'm overthinking that. I don't know. But in all the encounters and sightings that I've had, it almost relates to that. And I'm fascinated by Sasquatch. I know in my heart that the Sasquatches that I've seen are the same one. I'm not afraid to drive at night by myself. I drive all over. I I work nights. I work throughout the day. I stay home a lot by myself. It's not, it doesn't scare me. I have an indoor dog. He sometimes growls out the window towards the back, but, you know, he doesn't go wild. I'm sure if there was a Sasquatch standing there, he would. I don't know. But I don't think those are my last sightings. I don't think those are my last encounters and what I've seen. I always keep, I'm aware of my surroundings when I go somewhere. I love driving in the bush. We have a lot of bush roads here and I do have my FAC license like to hunt. I don't hunt to kill. I don't hunt. I just had to. I wanted it because I wanted to try shooting a deer, but that never happened. But I don't carry a weapon when I go out. I always think that if I were to ever encounter a Sasquatch, a close encounter, like, you know, so for him to be nearby, I don't believe that he would hurt me. I don't think that he is a violent being. But because I truly believe that the sightings I've had are the same one, I think it's curiousness on his part or her part. I believe it's a male just because of the way he looked the first time I seen him because of his husky build. I don't know if all female and male Sasquatches are both the same, 
but I truly believe that it's the same one and I don't think he's here to harm me because I'm pretty sure he would have already if he could. I've spoken to my late brother-in-law, Leo, the one he was there the second time in the field with the fish and everything. He passed away about five years ago, but before his passing, I used to go visit him because he was bedridden before he passed. And I used to go sit in his room and, you know, we would talk. And I said to him, do you remember when we seen a Bigfoot? He says, yeah, I'll never forget that, he said, because I've seen him before. I said, well, where did you see him? He said, I seen him by your mom's. And it just, like, it was just like, I'm not the only one who's seen it. Like, so many people here have probably seen it, but are not vocal or verbal about their sightings. It is um, a First Nation community. All, all the people here are Ojibwe, Ojibwe Native people. Because there's more houses Houses being built like every year here, or houses brought in. It seems that there's less sightings within the community, but where I live, it's still, you know, a lot of woods, a lot of trees. And I always think, well, if he's here, let's hope he's nearby because, you know, there's still a lot of places he could hide. Am I afraid of him? No, not I used to be because I didn't know what he was. But now that I know, you know, a lot of people have seen a Sasquatch. When I was younger, like when I was five, six years old, I never heard of a Sasquatch. I never heard of Bigfoot. And then through the years, you know, I've heard people have this sighting and this sighting. And the past five, ten years, I've read stories like everything, like even all the Facebook groups I'm in on Sasquatches. I love reading stories of people's encounters or hearing them. And around here, no one really mentions anything. So I don't know. I talked to my husband because we're still friends, even though we live separately. And he's even told me, like, you know, I've seen this sasquatch by like an hour away from here i've seen my sister-in-law say you know i've seen a, a sasquatch by this house like two hours from here so i know it's i guess sightings are i'm gonna say regular in manitoba not only here but i don't think people speak a lot about it because even when I told my stories, you know, to people around here, they really didn't believe me. I thought they didn't believe me. Maybe they didn't know what to say to me. I've had people laugh at my stories and, you know, it, it, it shamed me because I didn't want to tell what I saw because it happened so many times already. And then I guess what I'm thinking is, you know, the same Sasquatch has followed me all these years. Is that possible? Maybe I'll never know the answer. Maybe it's uh, a messenger, as I said. Not a good messenger. But in our Ojibwe culture, a Bigfoot, they call him Sabe. And he is a symbol of one of the seven sacred teachings, and it's honesty. I'm honest about my sightings, my encounters, my beliefs, and what I think. I don't know why I have been chosen to see him so many times. I do not believe he's interdimensional as they say like through portals and no no i believe he lives here on earth just like we do and you know i hope one day that i do have another sighting 
I hope I see him closer than I have. I mean, from him crawling in the grass, because I know that was him, to my truck was like 10 feet away. But it was raining and dark. Only my truck lights were on him. My other ones were like 100 50 yards, not even 20 feet, not very far. I don't know what I would do if I saw him again. I do have cameras, as I said, and um, one summer morning a couple of years ago, because my cameras, you know, they, they go off when there's motion detected. So this one morning, my cameras went off, but I didn't check them. Because I just checked if there's somebody outside. And I told my daughter the next day, can you check? And because there's something went off that morning. It was like quarter to seven or quarter to eight in the morning. And she says, um, well, there's something there on the camera. Looks like hair. My cameras are 10 feet off the ground, off the ground to the side of my house there. And... She goes, well, there's something on there. It looks like hair. There's probably a moth or a bird. And I said, how can a moth or a bird hang from the bottom of the camera? So she screenshotted it and she sent it to me. And, and then the camera's motions before and after. And there's nothing there other than that few seconds I guess that well to me I sent it to my nephew because he's such a, a Bigfoot fanatic of himself and he goes that's Sasquatch here I still have those I've never seen a, a perfect print I'm going to say uh, any footprints in the mud or even when that Sasquatch was standing by the shed there was just grass trampled on that shouldn't have been trampled on when I had my first sighting when I was five or six, I didn't go check for footprints. I never thought of even checking for footprints. I just know what I saw. And I know what I saw. And I seen this four times, three times for sure, fourth time. I didn't know what that was. Two barrels <laughs> crawling through the grass. But I believe that's my fourth sighting. And I believe I'll have some more. It doesn't scare me because I really would love to see it like in the daytime. Is that ever possible? I don't know. But I just wonder why I was chosen to see this being as many times as I did, whereas other people have not even seen anything like that. But that is the story of my encounters. I hope you enjoyed my stories. They are true. And it's something that fascinates me today. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you. My Bigfoot sighting happened on spring break about three years ago. My family likes to go camping a lot. So that particular year, we decided to go to the Grand Canyon. So we were preparing for our trip spring break. We're from Texas. So when we're talking about going to the Grand Canyon, I booked the trip and I knew you know, what the campsites looked like and, you know, it was populated and my brother and my husband were helping to plan the trip and they, for whatever reason, thought we were going to be in the middle of nowhere and they were buying like whistles and lights and all kinds of things. And looking back on it, it just <laughs> makes me laugh. My husband is a great outdoorsman. He loves to be outdoors. So he saw that there was a forest outside of the Grand Canyon. And so he decided that we were going to go on the forest road in Kaibab National Forest. And so we took this trip 
it's out right outside of the entrance somewhere in that area. And we're driving down. It's just so lush. And there's snow on the ground, which we didn't expect for spring break in Arizona. So we were totally not prepared for like the nighttime weather. And we go down the service road and um, we're driving and I'm looking out the window for animals because there's elk and they have a special type of deer that is called a mule deer. And so they're so interesting to look. So I'm looking out the window and there's this big patch of snow on the ground and there's this huge print on the ground. I look at it and I'm like, oh, well, that's strange. And I pointed out to my husband who's driving. We're in two cars and we're in the front car. My brother's in the back car with his daughter and I've got my two kids and my husband. And I pointed out to him and I'm like, oh, that's strange. Like maybe it's a snowshoe or something. It was just a shape of a print, but there were no indentions as far as like toes or anything a shoot like you couldn't tell exactly what it was it was just this large outline of a print so I took a picture of it and I just went about the trip like okay you know that was interesting and in the back of my mind and I'm not ever been like a huge believer in Bigfoot or Sasquatch or anything like that and so it crossed my mind and then that was it kind of went about the rest of the drive and we're trying to go to the end of the road. And at one point we end up stopping and having to turn around because it's muddy and the snow is melting. So it's so muddy and we can't drive through. We, we, we didn't want to get stuck. So we decide to turn around and at this point, my brother's now driving the car in front of us with my niece and she's about, I want to say like six at the time, somewhere around there. And we're in the back car with my kids in the back. They're playing on their video games. They've got their phones and I'm trying to get them to look out of the window like, oh, look at this beautiful scenery. It's like grassy and there's lots of trees and of course they're just not that interested so <laughs> I'm just looking out the window you know trying to find elk and deer and all of a sudden I see a creature like standing up and walking away from me and I look at it and I'm trying to figure out like, what is this? So my first instinct is, to, is it a bear? So I look for like the ears, the coloring is off. The fur is too long. Like bear fur tends to be shorter than what I saw. So it can't be a bear and it's walking upright on two feet and it's, like um, the, the the color I can most closely describe it with is like an orangutan, like the color of an orangutan, but a little bit more brown. And the hair is longer than what a bear's hair would be. And I would even think the orang it was longer than the orangutan, like a, an orangutan's hair would be, because I feel like that's longer than a bear. And it's by this tree, standing by this tree, and it's walking away from me just like with no care in the world. It has no care in the world. And I'm just like in shock of what I'm seeing. And I'm sitting in the car with a camera in my lap, like a professional grade camera in my lap. And I'm looking at this creature and I, I don't want to look away because I'm afraid if I look away, like what if I look back and it's not there anymore? And I was just so intrigued by what I was seeing and just like dumbfounded. And it's just got this, the head of the creature is, um, 
pointed at the top. It's not round like a normal, like even a, a gorilla or it's it's not as round. It's like more pointy, almost triangle-like, like if you were going to draw it, but not so pointy at the top. Obviously, it's got a curve and it's got long arms and it's tall, like 10 feet tall. It's tall and it's got these long arms and I couldn't make out any fingers. So I don't know if the hair was like grown so long past the fingers where you couldn't see. So it just looked like a a long arm and like kind of a shape like a hand would make, but you couldn't see any individual fingers. And I was such in shock when I was seeing this and I am screaming at my husband, stop the car, stop the car. And in my family, we like to play a lot of jokes on each other. And so he did not, he thought I was making a joke. He thought I was pulling his leg because I'm screaming, stop the car. There's a Bigfoot. There's a Bigfoot. Stop the car. And he would not stop the car. And I was so frustrated. He would not stop the car. I wanted to like jump out of the car and run towards this creature because I was so intrigued and I, I wanted to see it up close. And thinking back on it, I am just so it's so interesting to me. Like I, I wasn't afraid. Like I, I wasn't afraid. It was, you know, you normally see big animal and you're out in nature. I think it would produce some type of fear, but I had no fear so much so that I was, you know, contemplating jumping out of the car and uh, my husband didn't believe me. He was driving. He didn't see it. My kids are in the back playing on their phones. And I don't know how they didn't decide to look out the window when I'm screaming, there's a big foot. There's a big foot. So when they finally, I guess, decide to look, they didn't see anything. We had passed it because we're driving pretty, pretty quickly on this road. And so I'm like, somebody else had to have seen this. I couldn't be the only one to see. So I call my brother who's in the car in front of us. Surely he saw what I saw. And my brother is a big believer in thing Bigfoot. He's very interested in paranormal aliens, like all of that thing. So I was like, surely he had to have seen what I saw. So I call him. He answers. I'm like, did you just see that? He's like, well, see what? I'm like, Bigfoot. I saw Bigfoot. Again, we love to joke. He thought I was pulling his leg. So he's like, no, I don't think I saw anything. So he gets off the phone, calls me back, like, I don't know, about 20 seconds later. And he had asked my niece, like, hey, did you see anything? And she said, yeah, I saw something. It was by a tree crouching down and I saw it get up and you know she didn't know what it was and uh, you know she's got to be like around six at the time so he calls me back and he tells me like oh she saw whatever you saw she saw it so I was glad that I wasn't the only one so we get back to the campsite and I cannot stop talking about Bigfoot and literally I am like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe I just saw that. I'm just so dumbfounded. And my mind just goes wild thinking like, if Bigfoot is real, what else is real? What else out there do we not know about or that we might think is out there and not know? Like, I don't know. It's just... My mind is just going crazy thinking of all the possibilities because if Bigfoot is real, so many other things can be real and can be different than like my reality basically changed. That's how I felt like, wow. So my brother 
And it's like, maybe it wasn't, maybe you didn't see Bigfoot. Maybe it was like somebody walking in a ghillie suit because it's Kaibab Forest. It's super foresty, but you can camp out there. Anybody can camp out there. So on the way in, there were a few people camping, but where we were, it was pretty desolate. So I'm like, okay, I don't know if you're allowed to even hunt there. I'm not sure. So we finally get home from our trip. I'm searching online with my brother looking up ghillie suits. And my brother mentions the bear. I was like, it definitely was not a bear. It didn't have ears. It could not have been a bear. It was bigger than a bear. It just could not have been a bear. So we're researching and looking at ghillie suits and we're, we're on there for a good, I don't know, hour at least. And um, nothing that I found resembled what I saw that day. After this encounter, I do have my childhood best friend and her husband is an avid believer in Bigfoot. So he was one of the first people that I called after I saw Bigfoot or had my encounter. And he just could not believe what I saw. And he was so jealous because he wanted to see Bigfoot so bad. And he said, why do people who don't believe always see Bigfoot? I really want to see a Bigfoot. He was so upset. But he was so intrigued with what I was telling him. And for me, it was a fun thing to be able to share because I knew how much he like would be excited to hear what I had to say. And it's just kind of funny that I ended up seeing a Bigfoot because me and my friend would kind of pick fun at him and like joke with him about being such a big believer in Bigfoot. And so I just thought that was super interesting. I talk about it with my niece and we're telling like my mom. And of course, I feel like it's so unbelievable of a story. Most people are very, very skeptical when you're telling them your story. So you literally feel crazy when you're sharing your story. So I'm like, oh, but I got to the point where it doesn't matter to me what everybody else thinks about my story, if they believe me or not, because I know what I saw and that's enough for me. So if I'm telling my story and they're laughing or whatever, they can have their own reaction. But I know what I saw that day. And it just changed my world. Well, that's it for tonight's show. If you've had a Bigfoot sighting and would like to be a guest, please go to mybigfootsighting.com and let us know. Thanks for listening. Have a great night. Seen a bunch of run-down new horse towns Where the church is the backbone, loves in the bow And the five-string melodies groove in where the roots run deep Beyond the noise of the busy streets Where the songs of the south are soothing When I hear the front porch picking down Home rhythm ringing out I don't run from banjo music Yeah The sound of a memory brings me back To the bluegrass playing on my dad's A-track this pick-up man had been through it Getting through the day on Scruggs and Skaggs Booking their bells to those Tennessee jams There's no other way that I'd do it When I hear the front porch picking down Home rhythm ringing out I don't run from banjo music Yeah In the drummer of Kentucky star Those are the anthems drumming now Country boy living When I hear the front porch picking down Home rhythm ringing out I don't run from man to music 
fly With the bass on the stereos booming When I hear the front porch picking down home rhythm ringing out I don't run from banjo music Yeah Best sweet tea, come and stand.